Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. Give us just a minute. We're waiting for our other platform to join us, I believe. We're good. All right. Well, hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean. The episode today is JL93. We are seven episodes now away from the big 100. Uh, today it's going to be beginning colored pencil skills with basic supplies. If you're interested in any of the items that we're going to be showing on the show today, all you have to do is go to jerrysartorama.com, type in that search bar at the keyword JL93, just like the episode, that will bring up all of the supplies that we have listed, of which there are not very many because this is, again, beginner colored pencils. So we've got a very ridiculously priced, inexpensive set. That's a great starter set for people that kind of aren't sure, you know, maybe if they really want to get into it as much or, um, you know, want a decent basic starter set to just kind of see what it can do, give it, for, take it for a spin, see uh, what color pencil is all about. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Um, let's see. Colored pencil, it's a medium, you know, a lot of people use it for coloring in coloring books. A lot of people use it for just decoration, for cards. A lot of illustrators use it. Really though, has kind of become a, a fine art medium since the 80s. Um, if you're familiar with the Colored Pencil Society of America, they do all sorts of different really cool things for their members, including light fastness testing on all of their products. It's a great, interesting, uh, club to be in and the artwork in it is amazing. You would never in a million years dream it was colored pencil that's used for it. So uh, so it's much more of a fine art medium now than it ever once was. So we will get into kind of some fun things you can do with that. Uh, actually colored pencil is something I've got probably one of the strongest backgrounds in even over oil painting, surprisingly. Uh, I intended to be a medical illustrator after college, took a lot of medical and biological illustration classes in college, really enjoyed colored pencils, uh, and so I did a lot of extra work with them, did a lot of my own fine artwork after college with them, probably would still be doing a lot more of them if I hadn't had to have hand surgery, so that kind of kind of killed the grip for a good while and, and painting was easier to do. So that's when I really got into oil and acrylic painting. So, um, so anyway, I've got a, a, a background in that. So any questions that you have with that, uh, where that relates to fine art skills or even just starting out, I've, I've used all of the major brands. I've got, a, I can give you feedback on pretty much anything. So, um, Will was kind enough. Everybody loves Will. I can see Will smiling from across the room. Uh, to scan some very ancient slides for me, just to show some examples of, of fine artwork. The pieces are long since uh, bought by collectors or commissions that are gone. The slides did not reproduce that great because they're like 25 years old, but we've got some examples. We'll look at them now. And then we've got examples of other color pencil art we'll look at real quick before we get started with our demo. Um, Katie, if you can hit the overhead for us. Uh, this was a colored pencil commission. Let's see if I can get it with no glare. There we go. Of a Boykin Spaniel. Uh, it was done on, it's, it was actually very large. It was 12 by 16, so much bigger than this. Um, done on a textured paper. Uh, probably uh, the Canson My Teens, because I just really enjoy that pastel paper. It's great for colored pencil. Uh, so that's just, from, from the um, client's actual photo, the dog was in a barn. You could see up the street with the snow. They wanted it to look just like that. So that's the Boykin Spaniel. Uh, then this one, sadly, the, the slide is, was really in bad shape. You can see all the damage over the year. But, but um, that was a colored pencil done of Kwanzaa that was one of the gorillas at the North Carolina Zoo. It was actually in a couple different shows there that they had. He was eating a piece of cardboard box and that did not look very attractive. So I switched it out for a daffodil. <laughs> yeah, like he was just like having a field day with chewing a cardboard. It was like a puppy, but a giant gorilla chewing a cardboard box. Um, so that's on tinted paper as well. Uh, this is one of my two favorite works I've done in colored pencil. 
This is a flamingo from the North Carolina Zoo. This was actually a very large artwork. It was 16 by 20 originally. Um, and the color here that's kind of this kind of burnt sienna in the background, that's actually the colored paper that was on. All mm -hmm. the rest of that is done with colored pencils to make it that very dark, dramatic color. But it was a nice mid-tone to bring up then highlights from the flamingo itself. So that only made it to one show and it sold right away. So everybody loved that piece. Um, this was a commission. Well, it was actually just a spec work, but uh, one of my clients came into my studio paying for a commission and saw this and immediately reserved it. Was working very hard on it. I was really excited about it, Katie. I was like, workable, fi everybody's saying workable fixative. You should use workable fixative. You should use, okay, well, guess what happened? I sprayed workable fixative on it right here. And the legs disappeared and the butt and everything, like the whole backside oh. disappeared with workable. I, I very lightly, I'd shaken it enough. It was just, I had never used oil pencils, right? And it made the color absolutely disappear and sink. And I started screaming <laughs> and then crying and, and then profuse swearing <laughs> went from there. Uh, because this was, this was also 16 by 20, so it was very large and I was trying to beat a deadline to enter in a show and then she was going to have it afterwards. So, but I really liked how it ghosted the leg out right there. So I ended up making dust. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like it's walking yeah. through this little dust. Oh no, so it looked like it was in a dust storm and it was a pregnant zebra from a local zoo that I just, I loved her and I loved her markings and so I ended up keeping it that way. Uh, for that part and brought the rest of it kind of back up, but that was that was kind of like an unhappy happy accident. I guess uh, Never used fixative again on colored pencil work big surprise never again. It's the double <laughs> no. So uh, so that was a large colored pencil artwork uh, Stuff that we've done here. We actually did a colored pencil episode. It was JL 26 uh, for those of you that have been with us for a little while there is that link to all of the shows that we have in order. JL26, there was a Facebook show that was before we were on YouTube as well. There's also an after party though on YouTube with colored pencils and we go through all the different brands and um, Mike Goldstein is on there with us and so he gets to try. It's kind of like a great beginner's reaction to colored pencil and the brands and the differences between them because he'd never used any of them before. So that was really fun. Um, here is a little still life that I did with uh, one of the brands of colored pencil for that show. We kind of did an artwork for each of the brands. Little cucumber or cute cumber. <laughs> Green pepper. Uh, my son Riker helped out and did this with a tool, some pliers there, a uh, little shell. You can see on all these artworks, there's a different, a different colored ground, right? This is kind of like a felted ground, a nice gray ground, but you can see how the lights and darks kind of build up. That was pretty good for his first attempt at colored pencil, right? He had, he had not had a medical illustration class yet, so did pretty well with that. Um, this is a leaf with another brand on illustration board. So that's a, another example of what you can do just on white. Uh, with illustration board, you can't really layer it as well, but that was a kind of a nice little try on that. Um, portrait work, even on just a, this is just, I think this was Garza Papel. This was from a live model uh, at Sertoma when they did the, do, there's a, a, an art center in town that does, um, I guess, portrait drawing on Thursday mornings. This, I used to go to that. This is just the model in about 30 minutes in colored pencil just to see if, how hard it was to kind of get a nice finished drawing with shading and it was pretty easy, so. And that's not a typical paper for that. All right, so we're gonna be using um, the Cezanne colored pencils that Creative Mark makes. This is actually the first drawing that I did with it when we were gonna bring the brand in to try it out. Everybody knows that what is Amy? An art supply snob, right? 
Amanda, you're shaking your. You, I'm making you, a mistake. Type okay, no, I thought you were just like, <laughs> yep, no, we know you don't even don't even have to say. So I expected from the price on these, I'm not sure what the price is listed at now, but they're under thirty bucks. That they were going to be garbage, absolute crap, garbage, what have you. Okay, this, you know, I talked about the the tinted paper in the beginning. This is a gray paper, right? Look how nice and dark I was able to get that over it, but then use the lights with the pinks and everything else to kind of really make it look like that kind of, how you can see the skin under the pig, their little hide. The wood, I was able to get really awesome detail. These are wax pencils and wax, there's nothing wrong with wax pencils. There's wax base and oil base. They're, they're kind of two different animals altogether, good for different things, both of them. Just as long as you know what you're using, then you kind of know what positives to use and kind of how to hide the negatives that there are with it. The one negative with wax pencil is see on the dark how there's a little bit of shine there, right? That's a lot of layers of pencil though. If I'd used a darker paper, it would not have had to have that many layers. That's not unexpected with wax, and that's not that big of a deal. And once it would be matted and under, you know, some glass, you're not going to see that shine. It's because in here with these really bright LED studio lights, which why did I just look at them? That's not, <laughs> not brilliant. That's, that's going to show that shine. But keep in mind, this is also probably eight or nine layers of colored pencil making up that dark back with burnishing, burnishing, burnishing. So that's not bad at all. Even for a major manufacturer brand, you're at least going to have that. So uh, I was trained with Prismacolor. That's pretty much all we had uh, back in the day in class. These are perform the same as Prismacolor. The, the brightness and the contrast, the you know really beautiful, a nice array of colors for 72 colors. I, I would use these over Prismacolor in a heartbeat. So $24.99, Amanda says right now on the website for 72 colored pencils. I'm not even going to tell you what the Caran d'Ache set is that I have at home <coughs> that you could buy like, not 17 sets, but it seems like it for, for the same price. So nice, nice little set. So that's going to be what we're, what we're using um, for our demo today. So uh, do we have any questions so far? I'm going to show the show the um, examples that we've got or of the products we're going to use and then we're going to jump in. We do actually. Um, okay. Do the oil-based pencils smell? No, they're not. It's not. It's like an oil impregnated charcoal pencil. It's kind of, it's just, it's not, it's not a drying oil base. Okay, guys. So you're not going to have issues with it. You can erase it some if you're not heavy handed with oil-based pencils. It's, it's not like oil paint. That's a good question, though, because that's not something that a lot of people think about. All right, uh, let's go over the, the products real quick. Keep that so we can see what's going on from up above. So this is the set. They come in a nice little tin. There's colors and the numbers on the back. Now, they are a three millimeter lead, which if you know anything about pencil or uh, you know graphite pencil, color pencil lead, whatever, it's a nice wide lead. Um, they're also in hardwood. I like the feel, I'm, I'm weird about pencils in that I like there to be a little tiny bit of flex as you use it because there's a certain point where a technique where I kind of laid on its side and color. This has just that little bit of flex that I like, but not too much where you know you're gonna have problems with it and not too stiff where you can't feel the it sounds weird guys the vibration of the lead on a textured surface lets me know from experience how much of that color is going to be coming off onto the paper these are perfect for that um, it's a slightly smaller than some of the major brands so it's actually a little bit easier to grip uh, some of the the like faber and a couple other brands are a little bit thicker and kind of have that like a, instead of being round, they've got like a hexagon shape. That's more uncomfortable after having hand surgeries on both hands for me to use that hexagon shape. This is much easier for me to hold and it doesn't cause hand fatigue. The leads are actually bonded in the hardwood case. What that means is when they slide the lead into that wood barrel, they actually bond it with glue. 
So if you, unfortunately everybody does this at one point or another, drop your pencil. It's not that big of a deal from here to here with most brands. You drop it on a concrete floor and what happens? That lead breaks all inside your pencil. There's brands, especially the brand that I was trained with using, where you'll be coloring along and all of a sudden a little piece falls out, right? Where it's broken and then you have to sharpen, 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 sharpen way down to where that lead is. And then you're coloring along and another piece falls out and you sharpen and you're coloring along. Bonded leads don't do that. So you're not gonna have the issue. Even if they break inside, they're gonna stay glued into the wood so that you have to get down to the break before that's gonna fall out and it needs to be up in here, okay? So it's, it's a very nice cost-saving measure. All right, then they've got two trays. And these come with the, with the trays and you can just put them in so you've got your kind of legend for it. So it's just a, a plastic um, little tray. You can set it out here. This, instead of being hinged in a weird spot, this is actually hinged so this will lie completely flat. Most manufacturers don't think about that when they make their tins and the hinge is up higher. When you lay it out, then it's at an angle and your pencils go spilling out or get knocked out very easily. So this is nice because this lays nice and flat. So it's a great variety of colors for 72 and you figure with professional colored pencils, they're gonna be at least on average a dollar a piece. This is not $72, $24.99, and you get all of those colors. All right, so that's the colored pencils that we're gonna be using. Um, I always recommend to people to use a colorless blender. And I've set, oh, mine's over here. Um, Prismacolor makes a colorless blender. What that does is back in the day, before they had the, back in my day, they didn't have colorless blenders. You used white to do your burnishing to layer color. The colorless blender is just the wax base that the pigment is put in for your pencils. So you can actually do a couple light layers of color, go back over it with this, and it's going to kind of help blend that color. So it's, it's an invaluable thing to have these. It's usually good to have some extra whites and blacks if you're going to use a lot of black, uh, but whites especially just a, a good thing to have. Leaning bridge. Even with wax based color pencils, you will kind of rub your hand through it and you can get a little bit of color picked up, which means you can smear color, get hand oils on the paper. This is what's called a leaning bridge. You place it strategically on the sides of your work. You can move it all around. You just lean that kind of your wrist or your arm on it. Keeps your hand up off the artwork, keeps it nice and crisp and clean, keeps your hand nice and clean, which we all know I'm usually covered with everything, right? So leaning bridge is an invaluable tool. And working on this stuff at home, I realized my leaning bridge was broken and I don't have one at home. So I had to be extra careful not to see it. That work. Yeah, I know. All right. Um, then, uh, Erasers that have refills, it's a little tiny eraser in there. It just slides into it. You can push it to get more out. The great thing with these, you know, it's still good to have other erasers. I love the Marie's 4B, especially with oil pencils. That will pick up a lot of the oil pencil. If you make a mistake, as long as it's not too heavy-handed, the Vanish 4-in-1 erasers are also really good for this. The nice thing about the stick eraser is if you have to erase small areas, rather than a whole lot of erasing going on, you can use something like an eraser shield like this, where it's going to, let me put it on something black where it's easier to see. There we go. Okay. Okay. Ah, sorry for the shine. It's gonna make it so you can erase just that small area that you need. It's got all sorts of little template shapes and sizes. So if you just need a small area picked up along a line or whatever, this is a great way to do it with, this, with a little tiny eraser. Um, pencil sharpeners, you know, people always want to use electric sharpeners. Unless you're willing to spend several hundred dollars for an electric sharpener, that's a bad idea. You always want to hand sharpen colored pencils and pastel pencils, just so you can feel kind of where it's getting close, so you're not wasting a lot of lead. The more lead you waste, the more color you're not able to use, and then the more often you have to replace them. So. Um, we're going to use the drawing board from um, the Creative Mark 
studio drawing board set. I really like this drawing board just to tape paper on. If, if we were not gonna film this at an angle, that would be something that'd be helpful um, to have it on the board, but we're gonna keep it flat. It'll be easier to see. Um, oh, and I forgot the, the um, this is an, another example of, that's with, done with the Soho colored pencils. Uh, colored pencil, that's actually on a sanded surface. So, all right. So, I think we've, oh, and the pastel paper that we're gonna use, it's a, a the Canson My Teens pastel paper. Great for colored pencil too. It's got some rag content. We're using the Earth Tone set. We're gonna use this kind of really pretty color. You will notice that I've colored little bits on a bunch of the colors in here. I always pull them out so I can see what's gonna be what and what's gonna work <coughs> the nicest kind of on the, the colors that I'm using for an artwork because sometimes they'll show up great on a dark color but the midtones will disappear or your darks will disappear and then sometimes something that's light that seems like that would work well you can't see your lights because the value is just too different so we're gonna use that nice kind of mid-tone I guess butternutty kind of color all right Oh, and tape. This stuff comes up really nicely from this, this neutral uh, pH masking tape, artist tape. It comes up great off that textured surface without tearing it. So that's why I like that. All right. Are we ready to roll? You guys seem awfully quiet today. What's going on? Just texting. Uh-huh. Just talking to him. All right. So before you're ready to do your artwork, what I always suggest, especially if you're getting a new set of colored pencils and you're not sure what papers might work well with it, this is an example of the same colors on two absolutely different colors. One, a nice, really dark value with this gray. One, a very light value. I'm gonna move this over just a little so it's kind of out of the, that window of me taking up the room. Um, See how different that is? See how these nice lighter tones kind of pop in here? Over here, <coughs> the mid ranges that you can't see very well, like the blues are much brighter. The reds, the kind of pinks in here. Um, so that's something that's good to do just to see. This is done with one very light pass, but with decent pressure. This is done where I'm really pushing hard to get a really deep, <coughs> excuse me, let me have a sip of coffee real quick. <laughs> Excuse me. I know. Don't die on air. That almost came out my nose. I mean, caffeine's caffeine, I guess, but still, not the way that I want to ingest it. All right. So hopefully that lets people know kind of what the what the value is in having that. Also, in just having it around so you can see the colors. Because I'm telling you, you know, and I would go through and label my number with a dark color, like a, I use just a jelly roll pen. I would label my number on each of these. So if I'm not sure what color's what, because sometimes it's hard if you don't have great <coughs> lighting other than right above your work surface, <coughs> it'll help you find those pencils easier. Okay. Put this set over here out of the way. Just keeping my other examples kind of safe under there. All right. So we're going to do this little peach. I'm trying to see where I can. Put it. Okay, that's in the thing. Don't need the notes. Let me take this and put this over here. Okay. All right. And I've got it upside down, which is not very helpful. I mean, I don't think it knows any different, but do we have any questions while I'm getting this kind of set up? Real Would quick, you ladies. use sandpaper to help keep your points you sharp? Um, no, because you're wasting a lot of color with it. This is something where... Uh, what what she asked in case everybody didn't hear would you use sandpaper to keep your co your colors sharp that's done a lot with charcoal because charcoal is so much softer Amanda 
but these are not gonna be, wax is slightly softer than the oil-based pencils, but these are not as soft as charcoal. And the problem if you're doing that is um, you're wasting a whole lot of color that you could have actually used. And you'll see with the techniques of how you apply the color, it's only when you come back and you're making really hard, sharp lines that you're gonna need that really fine point. You actually don't want that point a lot because what's gonna happen is see how if I'm doing this and I've got lines, that's not as, as helpful to block in color as if I'm just taking that and coloring that straight down, right? See how you can see that much easier? When you're working on tinted paper, you don't, it being sharp except for in those really nice tight detailed areas is not the most effective thing. All right, so we got this, we've got our tinted paper. How do I get my drawing from here to here without doing something stupid like taking a really dark color and pushing that on there and then every time I'm going over with layers, I'm picking that color back up and moving it around or worse yet, taking something like the black colored pencil, making that drawing so dark that I can't cover it back up with colored pencils. Colored pencils are different than pastels in that it's not a powdered stick that you can layer darks and then lights on top of it. You can layer some lights on top of it, but it's more for burnishing or lightening a color. They don't lay the colors down the same as pastel, all right? So what I always do is I pick a color, there's a drawing on here, but it's very hard to see. Can you guys kind of see that? Mm -hmm. What I did was found a nice mid-tone that was close enough to the color of the paper, but enough so where I can see it. I'm gonna outline it a little bit darker here so everybody can see where that's at. And outline the shadow. Can you guys see that a little easier now? We can see it. Okay. That's there, but it's not something where this is gonna pick up as easy because it's a mid-tone that kind of matches the paper. And as you go along and work, you've got this little tiny eraser if you wanna just very quickly take little bits off, it's very easy to get rid of kind of that excess, all right? So there's a lot of different techniques for colored pencil. And you know, if you're working on white paper, which I just I don't do, that's when those techniques are really, really helpful because you're going to actually be able to use line work to kind of differentiate stuff. On a textured paper, and when you're just starting out, number one, a textured paper helps you learn to feel how much of that color that you're laying down. It also is a little bit more forgiving in that if you're not putting the most even pressure on everywhere, you can kind of see the spots you're missing and you can kind of fill back in only those spots, if that makes any sense. Um, really, a, a lot of people just kind of, you know, do a, don't do a, I'm gonna put this down. Actually, let me use a lighter pink to do this. Because this is kind of a, it's harder to see on, on my monitor, hopefully you guys can see. It's kind of a very, very light kind of grayish pink, okay? So what I would do to cover this and then make it that lighter color is first, I would be putting a pink down. You can either do kind of a, lines together where you're kind of coloring, or I prefer to actually, I kind of put it along my line first where I'm gonna go, and then I prefer to kind of color in a bubble, if that makes any sense. You know how you've taken the standard eye test where you have to color in that little bubble with your 2B pencil, right? That's what you're doing. You're just kind of coloring in a rounded area. As it fills, you move kind of to that next area, and I'm pushing a little bit harder than, so you guys can see it. I'm not putting my pencil down and scrubbing this in, okay? I don't want to scrub. I want it on its side, and I want to actually put enough pressure where I can feel that coming off and I can see it coming off, and I can make it look nice and even, but not so much where it's you're gonna see that kind of waxy shine. That's, that's too much for this, since we're gonna layer other colors over it. You don't want it this light. See how you can you can see that, but just barely, right? You want it to be a little bit heavier, like this. 
So for your first steps for working on this, you really want to just kind of go around and do your color fill, okay? And kind of however the area is that you want to block this off. You can see where these are on here. I always have, if, if somebody took off a, uh, artwork off the mat, they would see colors galore all up in the outer edges. Yes, I could take another piece of paper and do that, but I know where my, I usually trace just in, just like maybe a quarter inch outside of where that in the mat window is, if that makes sense. And I trace a, a very light line with whatever my underdrawing drawing is. So I know to extend just to that or slightly more, and I know outside of that, any of that color is fair game for me to, to test swatches on. In case it's a new color that I haven't swatched, it, it gives me kind of a way to go, oh, no, that pink doesn't look right. It's too red. Let me get a, something that's a little more of a shell color, whatever. But that's, it, you know, gives me a little bit of room to play with. How do these leads compare in softness to the Prismacolor? They are almost exactly the same. It's, it's, if anything, the Prismacolor, Prismacolor are slightly softer and don't fill as smoothly, but they tend to snap the tips off more than these do. These are actually pretty durable leads. Um, so that was always my problem with the Prismacolor is that when you sharpen it to a point, you'd snap that tip off and then you've got like this big like shiv of a jagged edge. Um, these tend to not do that. Okay, and I've got this at an angle about like this, all right, as I'm putting pressure. And, it's, and I'll keep turning that pencil a little as it wears it down until I get to a point of where then I need to go ahead and sharpen that again. Okay, so what I would do is do this all the way around then I would pick kind of a, a mid-tone for the shadow. I don't want it to be too dark, but I don't want it to be too light either because then I'm going to have to keep going back in and, and you know, putting layer and layer over it. Then I would pick probably some of the darkest darks to come in here and do some of these areas. And then I would get kind of a base tone for a mid-orange on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump to the next one and it's only because we're kind of I want to show you more kind of as it gets further along because right now this is akin to coloring it in you're just coloring it in giving it some good smooth flat color some fill so then you can see to make your lights and darks and work those differences together okay almost like you know how a chiaroscuro is you have your darkest darks and your lightest lights right and then that paper is a mid-tone in between with this, I bring it, everything up to a midtown with, with kind of color layers, and then I start that kind of light and really dark effect. So let's turn it over to the... Can you say out loud about the light fastness of these? Can I say out loud about I've the... had a lot of questions. Like I don't want to whisper? I mean, I've had a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> um, right now, the Color Pencil Society of America is has a set, and they're going to be testing them. So that will be kind of the, the all proof of kind of exactly what, what they're saying for the ratings on them. So that's going to be... Because currently we have on the website that they are good to very good. That's, that's what the manufacturer has given us for information. We don't have light fasting testing on uh, like ratings on the individual pencils themselves. But we are working on that right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, see, most people, uh, uh, manufacturers will say, oh yeah, these are excellent, whatever. Colored Pencil Society of America will go in and do testing and they'll be like, oh yeah, no, they're not. So you, most people kind of almost default to them mm -hmm. for it as opposed to, because it, that's all done independently. The manufacturer is not paying somebody to do it. So that's kind of the do all tell all. All right. So can everybody see the difference between that one and the other one? See where I've got that color laid in, right? There's a nice shadow here. What I've done was I started going back over it with a, with a white to kind of see how it covered the pink to see if I needed to do it darker or not. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's hard for me to see on the monitor up there. It's kind the of, a little darker, a little well, it's, it's been blinking in and out. So every time I look up, I'm like, ah, it's gone. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I would be doing with this next 
see we've got this we're gonna go from there to there I would pick whatever's gonna be my lightest lights right now because again you can't be going along and making a whole bunch of color a whole bunch of color and then expect for this white to come all the way over it you will sometimes lose your highlights and what most artists will do is use acrylic or watercolor gouache which is what opaque right to just do little touches with a brush to get those lightest lights with the white if they need it all right so we've got some i'm not i don't like this shiny kind of stuff but but you can actually lighten it to make it what i'm gonna do with this white actually you know what i'm gonna pick kind of one of these nice buttercream colors because this white is gonna be too white that's kind of a nice little peachy color just fire away with questions if you hear me pause um, just fire away with them because I'll probably keep talking okay so can you guys see how this is pushing that kind of value lighter there everything else kind of looks a very similar gray value right so I would come in and I would do all of my kind of spots that I want to be the lightest light before like some a really extreme highlight. This is hard to do with this pencil thing right in the way. And I don't want the bridge to... Have we heard whether guys. or not we're going to be carrying those in open stock? That is something that uh, right now we're not, but I'm going to push for because everybody's going to love these and they're going to want to get you know extra colors uh, because everybody uses the light really light colors and the really dark dark colors a lot those are always the ones I go through the most so uh, I'm, I'm doing what I can to try to talk them into it because I, I want to be able to have tons of extra light colors to, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense so that's that's probably going to be we, we just started carrying these so that's probably going to be something brand new. Yeah. yeah, brand spanking. I mean, I, I think we had the prototypes. What I think I did the pig thing in, at the beginning of November, right? <clears throat> so, I mean, we've, we've just gotten them into stock maybe a month. So. Have you used blending stumps with these? No, with these, you guys aren't going to use, you're not using blending stumps. This isn't dry and powdery like charcoal is. You don't want to, that's... Your blending stomp is this, is that colorless blender, okay? Or white. You can see how I've got that lightened up. I'm going to put this little thing right here to lighten a couple little highlights right in there. And then I'm going to go back in to decide what my lightest light is here on the outside. Now, I'm doing this because I want that to be whiter. I can show you what the blending the colorless blender does. That's blending a couple colors together there in that shadow. See how that's a little bit darker there? Can't see it on the monitor. It's very apparent to me, but I'm right, right up here with that. Can you guys see if, if that's a little bit darker for you? Yeah. Okay, that's blended. There's, there's two colors, kind of um, a deeper reddish brown, and there's a violet, and then one other little color that I've got in there. Now, if I do that over here, it blends that white and pink and makes it very smooth so you don't see the texture anymore. But see how that's not any lighter? That's just colorless. So there's not enough layers of light on there. So I'm going to go back over that with that white. And notice that's not as bright where I just went over that colorless blender because that's just clear wax. It's not wanting to attach because that's just the clear wax. So I would want to use that colorless blender only when I was ready for that area to not have any more color and blend together. So see, I would go around this whole thing with that white. Now, and this is something that, this is where people kind of fall out of dealing with the colored pencil. See how little ground I've really covered right there? This is something where it's gonna take you an hour to build up that, that light or dark, you know, around something very evenly, um, very effectively. 
this is something where using that same brand of paper is good because you get used to the fill and kind of you can just mindlessly sit and do this and listen to music you know without having to really pay as much attention that that's covering that paper texture in an equal amount because you're just used to doing it but colored pencil is not something that quickly if you're wanting it to be like a fine art you know very detailed artwork that is going to very quickly pop up is there a question amanda you sounded like you were late i think that i answered it oh, is, that, okay. is that a mobius and rupert um sharpener yes it is nailed it <laughs> that's that's the demon one that cut me that time katie oh, is it? i found it and, and it's such a good color pencil just watch your fingers yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the and the little remember how we put the dummy guard on it with a piece of paper? The dummy guard's been taken off. Somebody must have been like, why did somebody mm -hmm. put tape on the back back of this? And it's off, so I need to be careful with it. Okay. See how that's lighter? I'm gonna go in and do one more little bit with the dark one. We're gonna skip to the next one just so we've kind of we can work on more finish work of something as opposed to all right, so I would be coming in here. There's a nice dark shadow here. I would be coming in here. This makes this look real 3D real fast. <coughs> I'm forgetting the bridge because it's it leans off the thing and I can't control the wobbling and it's like scraping the paper. See how that little bit and starting to shade that? Oh, yeah, in the monitor, you can see all of a sudden that pops this part up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Frida, do you have any questions on YouTube? No, but Jacqueline was asking me to say hi. So, hi, Jacqueline. Hello, Jacqueline, and hello, Cindy. Because, you know, we're, we're Cindy's Thursday, Tuesday night dates. So. Where are my flowers? I, <laughs> apparently, that's not how Cindy rolls, is it, Cindy? <laughs> <laughs> um, Glenda asks if you'll be addressing blending with rubbing alcohol, or will that be like a two-hour That's one That's thing? something that's, that's not a beginner thing. And with <laughs> wax... With, with wax, it's really not good to add a lot of additives. Uh, that works well with, with the oil pencils. With wax, a lot of times, that can, like, totally, you know, if they're not super pigmented, that can take your, your color and suddenly make it disappear, kind of like using fixative on something when you don't know what it's going to do. Yeah, yeah what? I'm just saying that's... That was how I found it to not do that. Just trying to kind of bring this up a little bit more to where I know the other. See how that gives that pit a little bit more 3D suddenly, putting in some of those darks and kind of some mid-tones for shadow, and I'm starting to do the Wolverine thing again. <laughs> what, I, I've looked down before and had, like, somehow been trying to, like, hold 20 pencils at a time and wondered why I needed hand surgery. Okay, is that, is that starting to kind of pop for people? Can they see the mm -hmm. dimensions for that? It's so weirdly quiet, I just don't even know. Have you ever watercolored, like, to block out large areas and colored over it? The problem with that is you're going to have to use a much heavier duty paper if you're adding watercolor to do your underneath. And you need to think of it this way, too. It might be good to use watercolor gouache because that's matte and flat to do actually transparent watercolors and then go over it with something that doesn't have that shine and that depth and that kind of translucency ends up looking really weird. If you see those patches showing through, that's something that a lot of pastel um, instructors will warn people that they may not want to do, is you'll have these translucent wash patches, Amanda, and then all of a sudden you'll have like these really flat areas. And what that does 
is make the flat areas all look very just one dimensional and then the translucent stuff drops back. So it kind of, it does what the shadow just did with the optical illusion that made that pop forward because of that opacity. So it, it's, it's something where you would definitely want to experiment with. It depends on what you're looking for to do with your artwork, right? So it may work really well for what you're trying to do and it may miserably fail because that's, you know, kind of not what you're going with at all. All right, so, whoops, I guess we can just like switch to here. The magic. Of... All right, so see, we've got more shadow there that definitely has more of kind of that 3D look. All that white's gone around as compared to this. See how that really makes that look very different? Flattens kind of that background out so it's a different value. Value means this is darker, this is lighter if this was black and white, right? Oh, shoot. And my coffee. Uh-oh. It's a new color chart. It's... I think you made it worse. Oh, yes, I did. Well, luckily it's wax, right? I don't think Robbie not watercolor is gonna make it any better. Eh. It, it got the brown part off. Okay. I apparently need more caffeine. All right. So now let's just work on this. I'm gonna start bringing up kind of the brighter stuff that makes this look more peachy. How about that. We'll call it that. Just shout out questions as you get them. I'm not sure what you people have other questions about brands. I mean, that, that, the, what was it? Did I say GL 23? Was that it? Or 26? I threw my notes down and now I can't see. Okay. 26, I believe. 26. Um, that has a lot of, we went over a bunch of different manufacturer brands. So that's got, I think we just got one of everything, didn't we, Katie? Yeah, we did that. And went through it. Is there a limit to how many layers you can do? Yes. Whatever the paper texture is, is what's going to dictate that. If I was using you know, that portrait that I showed, um, was done with like a Garza Papel, a very soft um, <coughs> printmaking paper. That, I was only able to do like maybe three or four before you could start feeling it not wanting to stick to each other. Mm -hmm. The more textured paper like this, you might be able to get... Um, 10 12 layers if you're not pushing hard it's when you're starting to really push and work it into that texture that it's going to start especially with wax not letting you apply as much oil i think is a little bit more forgiving um just because it doesn't build with like a thickness like the wax does so it's it's really paper dependent completely okay See so that little bit of that bright edge starts kind of making that pop, giving kind of that look of the skin there. All right, so let's find. And a lot of times if I like the thing, I'll look at the value and look at the color right up next to what I'm doing. That's kind of the beauty of having all the colors right here. I'm not having to blend them like, a, like in an oil painting or something. It, that takes away that ability to do that so you can kind of just have your color right there and see what's going to be your closest color match. <coughs> this is so eerily quiet. What are you watching? And a lot of questions that have come up, at least on YouTube, they ask the question and then two seconds later you've actually answered it for mm -hmm. me. So. Perfect. Do you Good. recommend a cross hatching technique at any point? That's something where you're going to want to, that would be if you're going to want to, like we'll talk about that with some maybe more advanced classes and how you can layer color that way. If you're doing something that's more modern that you're not trying to make it look just like the picture, then that's where you can use that kind of thing. Something that's just kind of looser and more free. Everybody knows that's not how I generally work, so. And with this, we're just kind of focusing on kind of using that color to get the, uh, the 
image there. But yeah, you can use cross hatching. That's when you are gonna need to keep those pencils nice and sharp. And that's when maybe an oil-based pencil, if you're trying to get really tight cross hatching work, it's going to be a little bit more beneficial because you've got that um, kind of a little bit harder lead, right? So I have kind of a long thing, so okay. let me finish it and then answer. That's fine. Um, Ariel asks, at which point should a colorless blender really be used if the wax prevents further color layering? Wondering if it should be saved for later layers. Yes, that's what, when I was talking about that, that's why I showed that mm -hmm. and then showed you really couldn't attach that, that you really kind of like, like in this area, um, this is built up. I like what this color looks like. So let's take this and show that colorless blender right here. Cause after this, I'm not going to be able to go back. See how that gets that much darker. You can see kind of that reddish Brown starting to come through. Mm -hmm. See how much darker this is here. This, this on where I'm at, oh yeah, but you can definitely see that it has the more kind of the light blue that I put in. Can you mix wax-based and oil-based in the same drawing? You can put them together, but you're, they're <coughs> going to perform differently. Um, where a lot of people will utilize the wax with the oil base is for the lightest lights, lights and the darkest darks kind of at the end, Frida, for kind of just sharpening up an area. Like if you want to have a white wax sits on top really easily. And the um, because of the nature of oil, the oil pencil, uh, oil-based pencil whites are not quite as opaque because of the oil in it. So a lot of times, because I usually work in oil base, where I'll use white will be as a wax base white at the end for like last little highlights. Can everybody see how that really utilizes that mixing? Have you used this particular brand, the Cezanne, over a watercolor wash? And how did they perform? I did not, uh, what we were just talking about using the watercolor washes and how watercolor washes are going to be transparent because watercolor is inherently transparent. I like this paper. This paper isn't something that you can put, it's, it's got too much of a paper pulp um, like percentage in it. I couldn't think of the word. Katie's looking at me making faces like, uh-huh, uh -huh, and, and it's what? Too much of a paper pulp percentage. So I don't, if you put water on this, it would kind of pill up eventually and it would mess with it. So I don't use watercolor paper for my color pencil stuff. I don't like that texture with the color pencils. I can't put as many layers on it, in my opinion. So I have not done it with a watercolor wash. That's not, that's, I'm kind of a media, media purist for things like that. I don't want my watercolor and my color pencil to meet each other and get along, if that makes any sense. When you use the blending pencil, are you burnishing it? essentially is that the same thing is that different it's burnishing different. is just when you push down on a colored pencil with a and burnishing is usually done with a light color and then you really are working it into the fiber of the paper that's considered burnishing burnishing is when you're actually blending those colors together and it's just a technique burnishing you're using a lot more pressure layering like i was doing with the white you're using it kind of on the side where you're not putting as much direct pressure on. It's when you're holding it up like this and you're really applying a lot more pressure that you're doing burnishing, technically. Does that make sense, Frida? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go back in and kind of start putting some oranges in here. Just go ahead and fire away with other questions. I'm just going to do this until we're all just kind of close to the end. Yeah, so many of them are laughing. It's very zen. zen. <laughs> it's very hard for me to do this because I'm used to being right over the work or at an angle. So it's kind of like, I feel like I'm working in another state. It's very far away. What? They appreciate not seeing the back of your head the entire yeah, time. Yeah, that <laughs> usually is. Nobody it's really enjoys that. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's so hard to not lean over your work. No. So close to it, but well, you can't. You like, can't see if you if you're not over it enough. 
Like I can kind of tell what I'm doing, but uh, it would be much more uh, correct, I feel like, if you I was. You need binoculars. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yes. <laughs> Honestly, it's just so much fun watching someone else do the art. <laughs> See, I'm very much the opposite. I'm just like, oh my god, just give me the stuff. I was telling the other lady here that I wished I had colored pencils so I could sit here and draw along with you. Mm -hmm. See, you get me. Now with this, I'm just doing this really light because I don't want very much. And I don't want to take away too much of the white color under it. Does the leaning bridge help your wrist not get as tired? Um, no, it's just keeping me from rubbing it in. It, it does not help at all. And this has been an episode that although I am so happy to be using colored pencils again, I am also really fighting hand fatigue. But again, that's because I've, at the same time that I was doing tons of gigantic color pencil work where it was, you know, like eight, nine, ten hours a day of doing this in a row. I was also doing stone sculpture and this <laughs> is my hammering hand. So it was getting a lot of vibration, right? And I ended up having to have hand surgery because I killed the nerves. Yay, nerves. <laughs> yeah, that one, that's not. All right, well, why don't we wrap up some final questions if you have anything left go ahead and ask it fire away real quick because we're gonna kind of finish this and um and i will finish this and get the final one up by next tuesday just because i'll need to fit it in where i can around some be careful. You know other things they expect you to well this is pretty far along yeah. so would you seal this with a UV sealer? No, no, no. Okay, with these, because this is paper and it's absorbent to to any atmospheric, you know, humidity or dryness or whatever, you want this behind glass. And all brands of colored pencils in all sets, no matter the fanciest dang brand you got, you have some that are much lower light fastness ratings, okay, with the pigments. Um you need to have this behind glass. That gives you that extra added measure of some ability of keeping it from being, you know, that that direct light from being able to get through to it. In a mixed media work, you know, you, you've got less choices if it's on a panel or something like that. But any, if again, if you're using a UV-based spray, the chances are high that has mineral spirits in it. What do mineral spirits, mineral spirits are a solvent, right? It's a mild one, but what happens when you put solvent on wax? It breaks up the film, right? So, and these are really thin, thin, thin coats of wax that you're putting down. And that's what, and the other, the, the uh, zebra that I showed you the thing of was oil-based. That wasn't even, even wax and it, uh, you know, fried the light layers of color. So you definitely would not want to be, unless it's something that you have practiced and practiced and you can, Tell you've got a light enough hand and you can go over it, you know, in enough coats. I would never take an artwork that I just spent so many hours on and put a spray on ever, ever again without knowing what's going to happen first. It would always be practice first. So I'm assuming that you would not want to use Gamsol on this pastel paper either. No, Gamsol is not. Gamsol is for oil and acrylic, for, for hard film paint. Um, no, Gams Gam I'm thinking Gamvar. Gamsol is just mineral spirits, a brand of mineral spirits, okay? Of odorless mineral spirits. So you definitely probably are not going to want to. It's something where you might be able to do some wash techniques with it, but you need to practice those before you're going along on an artwork. Any last final? Little blush of pink. <laughs> and it spills up pretty quick. Yeah, that mm -hmm. looks. That yeah, looks with just, just like making that pit right. darker and doing just a little bit more of uh, kind of some color correction in here. 
that's uh that's a nice little little sketch and I've been working on these since um yesterday so I mean that's it's it goes along pretty quick with these pencils those pigs were done really quickly Katie I was shocked how quick I was able to get those pigs done with a wax based pencil so some pretty good stuff all right so what are we doing next week ladies you've seen the schedule you're like no what uh we're doing watercolor i think we're doing a very basic beginner or just watercolor landscape we're talking about how to apply color and and washes and things like that so it'll be very basic with turner watercolor amanda is nodding in affirmation thank you amanda <laughs> um if you have any questions about colored pencils uh please go and check that video because that's going to help the the one that we did last year that they've got the link to there that is definitely going to help you know more about the difference between wax and oil base we go through all of those we talk about different types of paper in that video um, and kind of how that feels on the different papers so that's going to give you that technical part of that that's going to answer those questions this is kind of more the as you're starting out how do you figure out how to kind of start that drawing apply color etc so um and if if we are we've we've got the links on for all the episodes now right on the mm -hmm. on this show in the notes at the top of it have the links to not only the entire all the shows in order that we've been doing for now two years 93 episodes this week uh it also breaks it down into another way of organization which is by topic so that if you're not interested in some of these things not to worry you can go through the topics that you're interested in and watch those and a lot of people have made suggestions in our jerry's uh our private jerry's live group we've already covered those so check the list and see all the cool stuff you've missed so all right well i think we're done with this we'll get this posted before next tuesday and uh, we'll see you next week for beginner watercolor. Have a good one. Look, Frida, I saved the color chart.